Well, well let, me, let me give you a couple of examples and see. So, for example, I entirely accept your jet example, and it's, you know, it's a known fact that there was a huge progress in terms of jet speed and, and all those things, and then eventually it sort of flattened up for 50 or 60 years. But maybe that's the upper end of the S-curve. And then maybe when we get another paradigm shift with, say, a new radical engine or a new radical uh, aerodynamics design, uh, then we'll have the beginning of the next S-curve because it's not a straight line. It's a consequence of, of S-curves, right? So take, for example, Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic might turn out to be one of these uh, sort of paradigm changers. Uh, in other words, if they can come up with a way to take people up in space for $200,000, now, five, ten years down the road, they may be able to take down the cost effectiveness of this to uh, say ten thousand dollars or even five thousand dollars and take us from la to you know sydney in like two hours right mm -hmm. yeah going okay. through the that stratosphere would, I would say that would be a breakthrough yeah. and that would be a breakthrough so so you know one could say that there could be precursors seen there you know there's the commercialization of space there's after that the commercialization of you know inter planetary space, just like there was the commercialization of space flight. But you see, the, the analogy with the human body, I think, doesn't hold, because those, those the, the number of variables that are involved in achieving what you describe is super simple compared to tweaking the human body and genome. You know, there's a thousand-fold more mm -hmm. components and variables in tweaking the human body so that we can live longer than 120 years, say 200 or 300 years. I mean, death is just wired into us. It's just what happens. Everything falls apart. So, like, if you could just, it's not going to be like, if we could just fix this one thing, then everything else will fall into place. Everything you do to tweak the, the genome or the biochemistry of the body is going to have tenfold more side effects and consequences that happen that would not apply to, say, space flight or, or, or air travel. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the response to that, and, and, you know, I'm trying to create a, a debate here between the two of us to, to, to see where it collectively takes us, because I highly value your opinion. Uh, wh what about the examples such as um, Dr. Anthony Atala, who created, uh, you know, three, a bioprinted... Uh, 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 bladder uh, about 10 years ago and transplanted it into what was then a you know an adolescent boy and is now a, a, a normal adult right an mm -hmm. adult with normally functioning bladder so isn't that pointing and you know cartilages uh, for the war veterans from Iran and uh, from Iraq and Afghanistan are not a problem to make nowadays they're slow right they're imperfect but they're not really a problem anymore cartilage is very easy to make things like nose ears etc mm -hmm. right uh, we, we've already made successfully bladder 10 years ago. Uh, so the idea is that eventually we'll start making, instead of aluminum or titanium joints, we'll start making real natural cartilage joints. Mm -hmm. And, you know, slowly, one we're already making uh, rat, rat uh, hearts and things like that. So eventually we'll take one organ at a time and we'll sort of fill in the whole jigsaw, the whole, you know, picture. Uh, and another way of doing this is, by the way, just yesterday I watched this, and I published it actually on Singularity Weblog, this fascinating documentary about the first head transplant. Uh, it was done in Cleveland, Ohio, um, uh, and it was done by a very famous neurosurgeon called Dr. R.J. White, and he did it on a chimp. Uh, and uh, basically taking the head of a chimp, the body of another chimp, and transplanting it there, and then reviving it, and then watching for all the effects. And he actually managed to sustain brain uh, outside of the uh, skull, alive for something like 12 hours, and then measure the output of the brain uh, in the, main, the way that usually that output is uh, considered to be of, of self-awareness and of thinking and of thinking processes within the, the neocortex and so on. And he demonstrated that too. And then he was invited to the Soviet Union at the time, which was the late 1960s, by the way, and was shown a number of similar experiments that the Soviets were running at the time, uh, which was um, uh, dogs with two heads, 
uh, or just a, a, a dog head severed without the body kept to light kept alive for many many hours uh, with a machine basically right mm -hmm. uh, and that was shocking to me but but uh, and then the doctor was going through the personal dilemmas and how he was you know coming from his Christian background himself and he went to the Pope to John uh, Paul II for advice about what happens because he said I believe that we can do that with people it, we're not far away he did it 50 years ago and the only reason why he didn't move on forward was the lack of money because at the time it would have been 10 million dollars uh, and he, he said I believe we can do that with people so if you are able to take basically the software or a small part of the hardware as you said we're wired to die we are what if we take this and put it into a new body which we can either take from uh, a donor which had you know an accident or we can fabricate piece by piece clone it in other words okay a couple things um, so what happened to the head of the accident uh, a person why can't we why can't we cut off that head and and put it on somebody else's body well well whose body are you going to do because if once you've achieved that technology and it's cheap then everybody should have their head put on somebody else's body if their body fails. So, so th there you have a, a, a sort of a numbers problem. Absolutely. But more importantly, um, obviously the the soul, the personality, you, however you want to define you, that's in your brain. Mm -hmm. And so it, it is the cumulative patterns uh, of all of our memories and personality and who we are stored in the brain. Now, the only way to achieve immortality is that that has to be not perfectly replicated somewhere else because that won't be you. So this is another thing that bothers me about some of the singularity, singularity scenarios where you, let's say, download all your memories and patterns into some other storage medium that's better, longer, longer lasting than the electric meat of our brains, just protein. Uh, something the equivalent of let, let let's say the time machine on my my computer here I download once a once a week or a couple times a week yeah. so it's all stored on this little side thing such that if my computer dies or gets stolen I still have everything here mm -hmm. but but that won't be you so let let's say that you download why not why not okay so let's say that you download yourself once a week onto the equivalent of a time machine for yeah humans yeah. Yeah. and you go on a a, 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 a trip overseas and your plane crashes and, and you're killed but you are are stored in this time machine and so you're you say your wife replicates you mm -hmm. using the time machine and there you are she has you back and there you are okay so there that's one scenario but now let's say there's been a terrible mistake the plane actually didn't crash the, the pilot was able to pull it out and save it but somehow the message got to your wife that you were killed and the time machine replicates you and you go home, you, and you, you want to surprise your wife, honey, I wasn't killed, and there you are in bed with your wife. And you're standing there in the door, doorway going, what the, that's not me, that's some other dude that looks just like me. Now there's two of you, which one is the real you? Yeah. You see the problem there, it's an identity problem. That's the question that I asked of Dr. Rando Kuna who is one of the world's foremost uh, scientists and who said that in his opinion mind uploading is not science fiction and he's working on whole brain emulation yeah but my point is that that won't be you it's and, just like a twin it's like, just like your twin who happens to have your same memories and those are all very important questions that I ask him and those are all very serious ethical issues and yeah so and, what's the know, answer and I ask him things like that so who is the exactly the same case that you ask me and I ask I ask him who is the husband of my wife and then uh, who is the father if I have kids of my kids and then what happens if you're a copy of the copy and not a copy right. of the original does that mean you're lower on the hierarchy or not you know yeah. those are all questions very tough questions but the fact that we don't have answers does not mean in my mind that we wouldn't have to confront them well that what I've just described is not a technological problem it's a philosophical problem exactly. of identity now the only the way around it for achieving immortality would be to to replace your brain neuron by neuron 
uh, with some kind of longer lasting substance. You know, maybe you coat the neurons or you replace the, the, the cell walls with something that's semi permeable, but let that lasts longer than protein does or some such thing. I can't imagine how this could be done, but that doesn't mean it can't be done. So that such that your memories never actually die because your brain doesn't feel anything. So as you inject these nanobots that go in there and replace every neuron with some kind of other substance that lasts longer, then then it's still you. So that that's the only scenario I can see that that maintains your integrity as an individual without any replication process, without the the two or three copies of you running around problem. Mm-hmm. That's very yeah. interesting. Let me grab this. So. You know, I share your healthy skepticism towards most things and towards the singularity too. What would it take, though, for people like us skeptics to change our mind? Are we the kind of people... Like like in the cryonics example, uh, freeze a dog using whatever latest technologies you want uh, and, uh, you know, for like a year. In you know in a, in one of those you know tubes in Phoenix or wherever and and then bring him back, uh, and then he's running around and so on. Not, I don't, I'm not talking about chill him down a little ways. Like we're halfway a- there though. We're yeah. halfway there. There was a rabbit uh, liver or kidney I can't remember that was frozen, um, and for a for an extended period of time, um, and. Um, after that was again transplanted back into a living uh, rabbit, and uh, the rabbit survived. Uh huh. Yeah, an organ's different than a whole. Organ. Agreed. Yeah. But but still, it's we, a step in the right direction. Yep. That's are fine. we the kind that's of people who can only accept something post factum after only it has happened entirely, and we cannot see the the direction or the steps pointing in that direction? Well, I think the steps are all great. So the other problem with life extension is that I see is that um, what's the quality of life of the extended time? Mm -hmm. So let's say you get more and more people living from 90 to 120, Mm -hmm. whereas it used to be almost nobody made it that far. The upper ceiling is still there, but with all these breakthrough technologies of organ transplants and so on, more of us make it up there. But, but at what quality of life are you lying in a, in a bed in a in a in an assisted living or a nursing home mm-hmm. uh it's essentially a vegetable because your organs are so sturdy now that's that's not a good solution the the, the problems of of dementia and alzheimer's and all that have to be solved i absolutely agree with you and actually one of the guests uh, at singularity university dr alex jadad um who is one of the foremost uh, doctors in canada he said that the question is not how to put more years into one's life. The question is how to put yeah. more life into right. one's ears. Right. So, so again, I, I think we're we're not very. I've not seen any major breakthroughs that, that are going to solve that upper ceiling problem of 120. Mm-hmm. No one's ever made it past 120 or 122, whatever it is. So, what's going to do it at that? What's going to make that breakthrough to make it 150, 200, 300? And, 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 and you don't want people lying in a nursing home from age 90 to 200. Mm-hmm. 